this is not just part of one tool. This is not just part of, oh, I'm going to be eating the fish, I'm going to be eating the antioxidants, and everything is going to, is going to be perfect. Of course not. I want to have a good brain health. I bet you do too. And having a good brain health, it's something that we all want because when I have a good brain health, my motor skills are okay. My mental skills are okay. My social skills are okay. I can keep on learning. I will have well-being. I will have connection with life. But we need to remember that brain health is something that we can be taking care of. And all brain-derived diseases and problems have skyrocketed over the past years. Why? Because we have focused only on treating diseases, but we have forgotten on how to prevent. And also how can I bring good nutrition and good tools from my lifestyle in order to have good brain health? And this is one, what I want to bring you in this video. What's the data behind having good brain health? What can I do? Is there something that I can do or is there anything that I can do? And of course, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of nutrition fundamentals that you can start doing in your nutrition for prevention, not only for neurodegenerative diseases, but also for things such as dementias, for things such as Alzheimer's disease, or just having bad memory, bad cognition, things such as depression or anxiety that are also out there and a lot of people are having troubles nowadays. What are those things that I can do? So we need to remember that the brain is a very precious jewel. We need to take care of it. There are things on the outside, but are also things on the inside that influence the way my brain is going to perform. In this video, I want to talk to you, which are those foods that we are going to incorporate in our lifestyle and also what are lifestyle tools that we are going to incorporate in order to have a better mind, but also a better brain. What is going to be that takeaway that you're going to get. The takeaway that you're going to get is the knowledge and also the tools. This article that I'm showing you shows how diet benefits the brain. And you can keep on looking and looking and looking for specific nutrients. What I'm going to talk to you in this video is those specific nutrients and how they benefit specific parts of your brain and also specific functions of your brain. What happens when you have this knowledge? What happens when you have these tools? Well, you can start treating or preventing things. So those are the things that you're going to get from this video. So one of the things we need to remember how nutrition impacts the brain. So there is a very well-known link between food and the brain. How dietary factors can affect multiple processes by regulating neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter pathways, synaptic transmission by relating the fluidity of the membrane of the neuron by regulating signal transduction. There are a lot of studies, old studies and recent studies showing the effects of food on cognition, the effect of food by things like such as depression, anxiety, cognition, memory, learning skills, but also things that go even deeper, such as dementia, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and there are inner foods in the omega-3s, in the vitamins, in the minerals, in the uh, fiber that we put in our diet. Those things, when we don't incorporate them, they put in risk our brain. So all these things, all these foods, the way we we balance our food, but also bringing in these foods, it's absolutely interconnected with everything related with brain function. Also, we need to remember that having a good brain is going to, to make better the relationship we have with food, the way we look at food, the way we smell food, the way we taste food, because all of these things are going to allocate everything around food in a good way or in a bad way. So it's not just the way our brain works, it's also the way we can relate with food, the way we can trigger things for good memory, or the way also how we handle emotions around food, how we focus if I'm eating with stress, if I'm stressed about all the calories, if I'm in an excess or in a deficit, or if I'm eating one more gram of a carbohydrate that I'm going to get fat and all these things, or if I enjoy food, how it connects me socially with other people, how it connects me in a cultural way, which are my emotions, which are my beliefs around food. All of these things are important around food. So which are those brain boosting foods? And I'm going to give you a list of things that we can incorporate in our diet that are going to be absolutely easy for you to put in your life. And again, I'm going to give you after a list of things that are non-foods but are part of your habits that you can incorporate. So which are those things? 
healthy fats, but especially omega-3 fatty acids. Where are you going to find them? In fish, such as salmon, such as sardines, such as nuts, such as seeds, seeds like chia seeds or flaxseed. Flaxseed oil is very rich in omega-3, although it's not the best way because it's in, a, it's in a way that needs to be converted through a lot of processes, but best thing is when you mix them all like fish in flaxseed oil or flax or chia seeds. All those things together are going to be beneficial for brain, memory, depression, anxiety, things like B vitamins from the B complex such as folate which is the active form of vitamin B9 such as vitamin B6, vitamin B12 that it's necessary for central nervous system but also peripheral nervous system. Minerals such as zinc, magnesium, iron which are also necessary necessary for brain health for the reduction of symptoms such as anxiety and depression. Antioxidants. Recently we made a video on antioxidants. I showed you the best foods. I also showed you the best way to consume those foods because we can be making a lot of mistakes which I also pointed on the video. I really want to encourage you to go and watch that video on how you can incorporate antioxidants in your life in a proper way and why should you incorporate antioxidants in your daily life. But antioxidants have been found that you find in fruits, in vegetables, in dark chocolate, in coffee, in green tea, might reduce inflammation, might control also your immune system by controlling oxidative stress. And this has benefits also in depression and anxiety. Please remember to take the right amount of proteins, not just the right amount, but also the right type of protein. Which is the right type when you are consuming all the amino acids, especially essential amino acids. Why? Because you need to remember that essential amino acids, we are not going to find them anywhere and the body has no way of making them. Which are those amino acids found in protein that are going to be beneficial for the brain? First of all, tryptophan. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid that it's a precursor for serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter, very well known, very well known specifically. All the medications that that people take for depression go through the pathway of serotonin. This is found in foods such as turkey, chicken, eggs, salmon, uh, some nuts, maybe some pumpkin seeds. It's very easy to find. When you have good levels, you might be able to produce good levels of serotonin. Tyrosine. Tyrosine is important for thyroid function, but it's also a precursor for dopamine and for adrenaline, which are neurotransmitters that are involved in cognitive function, in mood, in all these stress response also for the incorporation on making habits it's found in foods such as turkey such as chicken such as dairy eggs almonds sesame seeds also phenylalanine which is another amino acid which is precursor to dopamine which can also influence cognitive function and mood it is found in foods such as chicken turkey eggs almonds and also in sunflower seeds next one is glutamic acid and glutamine and these amino acids acids have been involved in the synthesis of glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, which plays a very significant pathway or a very significant function in neuronal plasticity, which we know that it's very important and crucial for kids, but we also know that we don't lose 100% all the neuroplasticity as we age. We still conserve some. So this is absolutely necessary. Where are we going to find it? Things such as red meat, fish, dairy, eggs, things such as tofu, spinach, broccoli, and also in asparagus. And lastly, one of the ones that I really, really like, which is glycine, that it's an amino acid that has like a calming effect because it acts as an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So it's found in food such as meat, such as fish, such as dairy, and probably my favorite source for glycine, which is bone broth concentrate. If you haven't seen our video on bone broth concentrate, I really want to encourage you to go and see it, to go and watch it, because it's probably one of the sources where you are going to find more glycine for all of its benefits, such as the benefits for collagen, but also the benefits for brain function. Again, you are going to incorporate everything into your diet. That's perfect. Please remember, when you bring these foods, you need to make your food delicious. But also, the best way that you can incorporate this is when you balance your diet. 
If you have all of these nutrients, but then you have an unbalanced diet, we have problems because you're wasting everything. If you're putting a lot of seed oils, a lot of sugars, a lot, a lot of colorants, a lot of chemicals, a lot of pesticides, all of these benefits are going to be fighting with all of the bad things that you're putting in your diet. You need to balance your diet properly. You need to stop eating late at night. You need to stop eating a lot of times during the day. You need to be spiking glucose and insulin all the time. Okay, good. What else? We need to chew properly. We need to cook foods properly. Some of the antioxidants that I mentioned, if you overcook foods, then everything is going to waste. You need to incorporate fermented foods so all the good bacteria in your gut are going to help or aim like a digestive enzyme making the absorption of some of these nutrients better. Some of these nutrients are better when you incorporate them with healthy fats. Of course, not just omega-3s, but also other things such as olive oil. Again, beneficial for your health. But you also, you need to remember on how to have a good stomach. And you may say, a good stomach, what does that mean? If you don't produce the right amount of acid in your stomach, which happens to a lot of people, you are not going to have the main enzyme that we have in your stomach, which is pepsin. Pepsin is made to break the proteins into amino acids. The amino acids that I just told you, if you don't break properly proteins in your gut, in your stomach, then you're not going to assimilate them properly in your gut. So we need to remember that it's not just how we eat, it's how we digest that is going to be absolutely necessary. Okay, so we already know this. Which are going to be those lifestyle habits, lifestyle factors for a healthy brain? Lifestyle habits severely impact our brain. We need to remember to have social interaction. People are afraid of having contact with other people or people are very lonely nowadays. We need to remember to build and to grow and strengthen the community that we live in. This is very protective for depression, for stress, for loneliness, and for other things that I don't want to mention because they're words that you cannot say in this video. We need to quit smoking. We need to quit vaping. People don't know the effects that these things have in our mind. We need to engage in mental stimulation, keep learning stuff, keep learning things, involve in games, involve in, I don't know, learning a new language, on tricking yourself and putting yourself into things that are going to keep your brain active. Remember that physical exercise, it's not just good for your muscles and for looking good and for your metabolism. It's also very important for giving you better blood flow and also for better learning, for being more intelligent, for cognitive function. People don't realize how important exercise is for your brain. And again, bringing good nutrition, it's not just about the nutrients, but also the balance, but also the way you relate to food. Please also to remember to get enough sleep. When you don't get enough sleep, the brain problems and the emotional damage that you're going to have is going to be very noticeable. And we always notice it. Every time we have a bad night, how do you feel the next day? We feel horrible. When we mix this and not balancing properly stress, then we end up having a lot of things going on in, in, in our life. And this is going to even start affecting the way we eat, the way we exercise, the way we meditate, the way we relate with other things. So this is not just part of one tool. This is not just part of, oh, I'm gonna be eating the fish, I'm gonna be eating the antioxidants and everything is going to, is going to be perfect, of course not. But then when you bring all this and when we remember that we need to balance our diet, relate properly, bring these nutrients and then incorporate them into a healthy lifestyle. When we recover, when we regain the power of being the owners of our health, then life starts changing. I've seen it with thousands of patients. I've seen it several times with diseases that people say, oh, that's incurable, that's untreatable. And people getting better from conditions that we thought that were absolutely untreatable. So again, how do you feel about this? And have you done anything similar with this? And again, please remember that the best way that we can be taking care of each other is by sharing this video. And also, if we wanna make a big community like the one I just mentioned to you, the best way that we can do that is when you subscribe to the channel and also when you click the bell. In that way, the platform is gonna be showing you more videos like this. Also, please remember to save the video and to hit the like button. So every time you wanna come back to this list, to these strategies, it's going to be easier for you. Okay guys, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.